Good morning to all of you. Welcome back to the Namaste experience here at beautiful Namaste Village. Mm. There's a lot to celebrate. So much to celebrate. More than anything, we celebrate that the truth is so simple. Reality is pure simplicity. That's a good way to describe it. Reality is pure simplicity. Simplicity itself. And yet, our perceptual mind loves to guess what? Make it complicated. Oh, yeah. We're very good at that, complicating what needs no complication, because the egoic mind knows that the more we relax into the simplicity of salvation, ultimately the recognition that it's already been completed, that there's nothing that you need to do, you are whole, you are enlightened this very moment. Enlightened just means filled with light. Is, is that so hard to accept? Mm -hmm. That you are filled with light this and every moment? I don't think so. So we need to allow the simplicity of salvation to penetrate our minds so that we can enjoy the gifts of simplicity. And yet, as we just said, the egoic mind loves when it's so complicated because it can keep it at a distance. Now, there are some teachers who, who love to to choose information over inspiration. Ooh. Now, we, we, we had a dear brother here last night who, who gave an amazing talk, rather filled with an information. In fact, the, the feeling that I got, and actually I've known Phil for many years, and so I've seen him do this many times. He, if he has an hour, he tries to cram five hours <laughs> worth of material into that one hour and cannot talk fast enough. And when he realizes he only has 20 minutes left or 10 minutes left, it just speeds up because he's determined to get the information. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but it is a choice, information or inspiration. Because inspiration does not need a lot of words. Inspiration does not need a lot of concepts. Inspiration is simple. It penetrates all of that armor that we've built around ourselves. Ultimately, the only message that we need to hear is this. This is the simple message. You only really have one of two choices in every moment. Reality and the unreal. But because the unreal does not really exist, guess what? It's not a real choice. Did you hear that? The ego or the split mind or that within us which is always hiding from the simplicity of this message or hiding from reality will always choose information or trying to get it in a place that it can't be gotten in the mind, as opposed to softening the heart and allowing that simple message to penetrate. You only have one of two choices, reality or unreality. You choose, or at least you can seem to choose, but the truth is there is no real choice. The only real choice is to choose reality. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense, choosing reality over illusions, over shadows. So this morning, or actually last night, I was sending out um, the lesson for those who are engaged in my three-month Enlightenment Partnership Program. It's a 90-day program where they get a lesson every single day. And I was sending out last night's lesson, and I began to read it, and I thought, this is absolutely so perfect for where we are. So I thought I would share this one paragraph lesson so you can absorb this just a little bit more deeply. So here it is. Today, we seek no compromise where there is none. Today, we seek no compromise where there is no compromise. 
Once again, how simple. The real and the unreal are your only choices. And yet, it's not a real choice at all because the unreal does not exist. Wow, you get that? You get that one message, that one sentence? The whole thing has gotten. You've received everything you could possibly ever receive because heaven then collapses in all around you like a dam breaking if you realize you have but one choice, reality. Choosing the unreal is not a real choice. It's the illusion of a choice. And this is all we do in our perceptual mind. We spin within the illusion of a choice. And I have two words for you. And you may have heard Bob Newhart say them. Anyone know what they are? Get up. Stop it. Yes. <laughs> Stop spinning. Stop turning. Stop trying to get what can never be gotten in the place that you're trying to get it. It's that simple. Stop trying to choose illusions over reality. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, Bob Newhart does an, a wonderful, wonderful skit. Just go to Google, type in Bob Newhart. Stop it. You'll get a good laugh. Once again, the real and the unreal are your only choices, and yet it's not a real choice at all because the unreal does not exist. The unreal is not real, so how can you make a real choice that is not real? Once again, the unreal does not exist and can never be real. So the choice between reality and unreality should be a simple one. Should, there we go, should eat on ourselves. <laughs> it should be a simple one, but so often it does not seem so simple. Why? Because of this innate guilt that we have claimed in the idea that we have somehow turned away from that which can never be turned away from. Did you hear that? The guilt from the feeling that we can turn away from something, reality itself, the divine, whatever you want to call it, Turn away from that which you could never possibly turn away from because it's everywhere, in everything, in every moment. So the illusion or the choice that you can choose something other than that is impossible. And the moment we embrace the impossibility of the impossible, the not only the possible but the already has happened collapses in all around us. Heaven itself you see how simple this is? Just choose that which is true, real. Information is fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but it's not going to get you there. It's not going to get you to where you want. The only thing that's going to get you to where you really want or where you already are is the choice between reality and illusions. Choose the real. So once again, why have you spent so much time thinking it's possible to choose illusions. In doing so, you've lost track of reality itself. But now, a door has opened, and you're able to see that which can be seen. You're able to see that which can be seen, instead of believing you see what is unseeable. Believing that you could possibly see what is unseeable. Whoa! That is really amazing. What is unseeable? The illusion of separation is unseeable because it's not real. Just say yes to that, please. Yes. yes. That was a lame yes. Are you willing to see the real instead of choosing illusions? Yes. All oh, right, I could feel that one. Thank you. But a door has opened and you're able to see that which can be seen. Instead of believing, you see what is unseeable. What cannot be seen offers no release from illusions that have never given you what you really want. If you want to see what is seen by God, then adopt the uncompromising vision of God. It really is that simple to adopt the uncompromising vision of God. Then and only then will reality appear where illusions once stood. Wow. Do you see how simple this is? 
Do you see how the choice of inspiration over information becomes a simple choice? And we can make that choice at any instant, and then that becomes the holy instant. The, the moment you make that choice, the holy instant is yours. So why not now? Why not now? Why wait for heaven? You're merely closing your eyes. So let's keep it simple, okay? And I would love to bring Vicky in on this discussion. Vicky, if you are out there, let me unmute our TV. Yes, Brother James, I'm right here. <laughs> what do you think of all that, Vicky? Oh, you know, that's all I know is simple. But I'm going to start with, I want to say a word about our brother Phil, because I did tune in last night and I listened to the whole thing and I was laughing at the amount of information that is at his fingertips. But what I got from it, and this is how it is for all of us, the love, the light, the, the inspiration and the enthusiasm that that guy radiates far exceeds the amount of information that pours out of his mouth. Amen, <laughs> amen. It was really, I, I enjoy watching him. It's like I was watching a, a cabaret review out of heaven. It was, I thought it was so totally delightful because his essence, his spirit, his Christ being outshined everything. And for those of you that weren't there, if you want to know the bottom line, <laughs> after he had spoken for almost the whole hour, he got to the point of forgiveness, which he had wanted to speak about. So the bottom line, in case you missed it, is forgive everybody everything no matter what. <laughs> And you will be filled with natural light because we're already full of natural light. There's no special procedure that needs to happen. We just have to stop putting the cover over ourselves. And sometimes that's why it's easier with a sinner than a saint. Saints are very pious and holy often, and they've worked at this and that. And they have come into kind of um, not a complacency, but an expectation that light be what they are. And a sinner is so full of horror and remorse sometimes that it's much easier for that switch to like, oh no, I'm totally off help and let it all go when something of light hits their awareness, whether it be a brother or a teaching or a Bible quote or whatever it be. But the gift of the sinner often is that gift of desperation on their knees and fully, fully full of self, whatever condemnation or guilt, they are more ready to receive a full answer because they're in a full expression of not the answer. So the answer of don't worry, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter, come now. That's all Jesus said 2000 years ago and continues to say in all of the different um, messages that through the course, through course of love, course of this, course of that, that it doesn't matter. Come with holy empty hands unto your God right now, just as you are. That's as simple as it gets. And um, Karen, Karen Palmer, who's often here every day and may well be here today, she does children's material. And she made up a couple of wonderful children's songs. Oops, I projected again. She <laughs> teaches kids to sing this little ditty. Oops, I projected again. That's all that happened. Instead of letting the light of our being shine without hindrance, we cover it up with some little projection of misbelief or thinking some desire or something. And really the simple message there is, oops, stop right there. She does another one called stop. Spirit, take over, please. Stop. Oops, stop. Don't do another thing. Don't think another thought. Don't take another breath. Just step back. That's how to ask for the holy instant. Oops and stop. Spirit, take over, please. And if you forget, hold your hand out to a brother who isn't forgetting in the moment, who will help you, who will smile at your dismay, not be horrified at it. And um, keep it simple. I mean, it's the only thing to do. That's why there's less and less to say and more and more to celebrate. 
as we celebrate that the truth is true and that all we have to do is be willing, this is the hard part most of the time, to let go of our attachment to what it is we think things should be like. Our attachment, and that's pretty simple too, what keeps us stuck? Our attachment to wanting to be or look a certain way. And when you let go of that, it's there's nothing else to let go of because it's always in the now. That's the other piece of keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. It's always just right now. Stop it right now. <laughs> just stop whatever it is and be willing and not just, oh, but only, but only, but if. That's those little words are the things that keep us tied up, strung up, and upside down. Just Okay, so what? Let go to so what? Stop. Spirit, take over, please. Why not? Everything I've done so far has led to this, whatever it is, conundrum, what I said that word, <laughs> has led to this unhappy spot. And let it go and find out what is real happiness. And if you can't let go of your outcome, that's all right. Just be willing to only right now. Right now, Jesus is all it takes is one unequivocal call for help. Help right now. Help without any little things holding on, any other ideas. Simply help right now. Here I am now. That's all it takes. Keep it so simple. And what happens often when I speak to a brother or a sister that's kind of stuck in something, it's not that they're stuck not getting help. They're simply stuck and not wanting to let go of that one outcome. Let it go, baby, let it all go. <laughs> because what there is, and it can look like everything and anything. Let it look like whatever it looks like. Because if what I find is if I really let it go and ask, I really want to see how spirit sees, how God sees, I haven't got a clue. But when that happens, I fill up with natural natural happiness and natural light. And that's what I see around me in everything that's happening. It doesn't seem to matter. I can feel it just like with, with Phil last night, you could feel that enthusiasm and that love. That's an easy one. It seems harder when someone's raving at you or raging at you, but in the moment, just asking for help is that moment switch that goes to what's eternal rather than to what's temporal. Temporal will always be the disguise. It will always be the delusion. We've been in delusion land. It's all been one big delusion and we can get freed up at any moment. There's no process to it. There's only total desire. And isn't the desire greater for the, for the truth than for some little aspect of the delusion to be show up a certain way when you think about it, let it go and be on the adventure of finding out how it will show up. It always shows up with love. That's the guarantee. Can't be better than that. Thank you, Brother James. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you, Vicki, as always. Exuberance, yes. excitement, <laughs> energy. That was the real gift that <laughs> Phil offered us last night, wasn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> the exuberance of his spirit, yeah. much more than his, his information. Yeah. It was inspiring. Mm -hmm. it was. The inspiration came from just his silly jokes and, his, and, his, and just the way that, that he loves everyone here. I'm just, I'm just so happy for that example because it, it helps us to be able to see what can be seen, as the lesson said. To see as God sees, which ultimately brings us into the experience of knowing what God knows. And what does God know? There's only one. How simple is salvation? If I just embrace that oneness, however it appears, I don't correct anyone. You know, of course, the, the subject of correction kept coming up at the breakfast table again today. What's the difference between correction and opinion? And you know, see how the, the ego wants to rationalize everything and determine what is and what isn't. Only love is. Only love is real. If we just stay with that, the inspiration will lift us above this world without effort. We don't need to do anything else. We don't need to learn anything else. We don't need to read any more books if we don't want. It's fine if you choose to. 
But the only thing that you need to do is to realize, to see through your real eyes that only love is. And nothing that isn't can do anything at all. So there you go. Sound good? Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Okay. All right. And so it is. Say that with me. And, and so, so it is. is.